Hey everyone, welcome back to Installation 00, and today I'm kind of rebooting the Cartographer series. I literally started with one video, it was supposed to be of different locations around the Halo universe, and we started with Earth, and I quickly realised that there was not enough information about various locations and planets around the Halo universe to actually make independent videos of each of these places. So we're scrapping that idea and we're reappropriating the Cartographer series for being an in-depth analysis of every single level from every single Halo game. We will dedicate a video to each level where we will spend a large amount of time walking around the level and looking at things and exploring and comparing things and looking at the abstract lore that attaches to those locations in as much detail as humanly possible because after all, this is Installation 00 and we do things at a most detailed level. Now considering that there are so many levels, I gleefully introduce you to Dashi, who's actually in part responsible for the Inferno theory for Halo ODST and he'll be joining me for the entirety of this journey. So with all that said, let's start this journey as we did nearly 20 years ago aboard the Pillar of Autumn. Here, this is where it will start. <laughs> as good a place to start as any, I suppose, at the beginning. Yeah, my, uh, my Twitch bar just isn't showing up. I like you can, you can actually see like the engine's power down there, which is quite nice. Oh, I never noticed that. Cortana, yeah. All I need to know is did we lose them? I think we both know the answer to that. Okay, cool. I forgot to turn on my little earphones. That's why that wasn't working. Right, I'm gonna just do... After this cutscene, I'm just gonna do a quick resync. Uh, just cause we my stream, or well, my app crashed in the background, but... It's fine, I've reset the stream back up. I'll just resync it. And we can okay. watch your... You can watch your cutscene. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, I'll just resync in the pause menu and then. We were be good. Running dark. Yes. Until we decelerated, no it's because uh, when I click start streaming, instead of going back to the app first, or back to the yep. actual game first, I uh, went to the oh, dashboard okay. and went to the game. And it stopped for me. So, where do we stand? Our fighters are mopping up the last of their recon picket now. Nothing serious. <sighs> But I've isolated approach signatures for multiple CCS class battle groups. Make it I was thinking about it. If we did, if we we're aiming to do like, in about 90 seconds, if we we're aiming to do this as like a basically kind of a, a, a level a week, Bring the ship back up to then alert alpha. in theory we can make the entire series of games that have been released so far stretch out for quite a long time. And, and it should actually close Let's the gap quite nicely between point. now and the launch of Infinite. That'd be good. Okay, you'd be glad to know as well, I'm also running this cutscene in Classic, so you can switch between them. Sweet! <sighs> like that so you can see the graphical just, uh, differences. Yeah, you can see Darth Maul on the left there with his fucking lightsabers. <laughs> and, uh... That's the room we end up in at the very end? Yeah. There's uh, a couple of really interesting points I'd like to bring up when we get to that mission. In uh, approximately ten weeks time, if you're watching this. <laughs> <laughs> Christ, hang on, there. yeah, there. I mean, if you think there's like Halo 1, 2, 3, ODST, 4, there's and 5. There's 47 missions in just the Master Chief saga, I believe. Oh, Jesus, Chris, basically so a, a year's a year. worth of content. Yeah. Nice! Nice. <laughs> God, Johnson blinking is nightmare fuel and classic. <laughs> it is, yeah. Yeah, it's horrible. Okay, just keep They increased the graphical fidelity in Anniversary, but of course the actual physical model has still basically only got like one bone in the face. Yeah, like one movable joint. Yeah. That's actually a point as well with Captain Keys. He's got like a permanent crease at the bottom of his mouth from where the pipe's meant to be. Because he was modded to have the pipe in his mouth at all times. He's hot. So he, has, he, he constantly looks like he's had a really, really like minor stroke. He constantly looks like Popeye, yeah. Like Popeye's <laughs> Oh my gosh! But, uh... There you go. We have uh, awakened the hush casket. And, uh... 
Nice. We are in. Okay. So, let's see. Um, this is totally new to us. This is the first time we've actually ever played Halo. Um, yeah. <laughs> Short hit. <laughs> okay. So, I mean, you can cut this audio out, right? <laughs> so, yeah, I, I can edit it. Yeah. I mean, I was going to say, I mean, should we let on to the fact that we had a failed attempt at recording this already? <laughs> yeah, we should. We should. Okay. Well, we've kind of gone we through. <laughs> yeah, we've kind of <laughs> we've gone through this level kind of before. But what's good is we got information on that run, which means when we come back into this run, we have more questions on top of the information we already had prior to that. So, yeah. how many how many uh, cryopods did you calculate with your big maths brain that could be in this uh, room? Because it looks um, to be that you could stack them at least too high. Yeah. So. Well, a quick count of the room is 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12 at the bottom. So that's 24 on your side, 48 over the other side here. And then um, and, 52 because of the 48. Yeah, 4 in the middle. So, yeah, 50, yeah. 52. So this one cryobay can hold 52 cryopods, in theory, at least. Which, and, when you do the maths, there is another cryobay literally on the other side. Of, yeah, the opposite. Yeah. It's, it's mirrored, yeah. So if you do the maths, that's... Um, a number, yeah. <laughs> and it's what, 100, 104, right? Yeah. Yeah, 50. Yeah, 50. And I, and I love that on the, on the ground floor, if someone gets out of their pod, they just get out of their pod. If you get out, get out of your pod up here, though, you've got like a, quite a substantial gap between the edge of the pod and the gantry. Yeah, like I can't... I've got a crouch jump from down here to make that kind of jump. <laughs> do you reckon Master, is crouch jumping canonic, like canonically a thing that Master Chief has to do? Um... There you go, see. You just about make it up when you crouch. Just, them. yeah. Um, I would, I would imagine the Spartan probably has the reaction time to jump and then tuck his legs in underneath him to get, um, to get up to a higher place. I mean, it's it's a bit like vert jumping, really, isn't it? When people practice yeah. that. I I will say. So I know we're meant to be doing this for the sake of pointing stuff out to the to the common player. But if you are to stand sort of with your crosshair, and if you go into classic graphics, if you jump on one of these pods. See, there's like that middle panel, right? I if saw you a... jump, yeah. yeah, if you jump and crouch, not jump and crouch, but if you crouch while you're on the pod and back up while looking directly down, you can see the <laughs> feet of the Spartan in there. Well, I'm stood at a certain angle at the moment that I can actually see all of Chief's body with the exception of the, he the head. Yeah, I'm sort of tilted as well. I'm at the exact same angle as you. <laughs> Two headless Spartans just in their pods. Yeah, it's just it's a small thing, but it's there. It also, when the mission starts, you can actually jump back in there, and there'll just be you'll be you crouched in there, and you can see the Master Chief's like body in there as well. Weird. That's it. Just small detail there. It's worth noting in the lore, apparently, it's best to go into cryo sleep completely naked. I know it. I know it. The, like the the TV, uh, it was the t it was a TV series, wasn't it? The um, Fall Under Dawn. Yeah, wasn't they have no, them clothed. No, it wasn't a TV series, a web series, wasn't it? They have them clothed, but it's actually. A full yeah, in in the law, yeah, it is. Yeah, in the law, it's um, it's recommended you go in naked because covered skin reacts negatively to, um, okay, <laughs> reacts negatively to the, um, uh, to the cryogenic process basically. So, you could consider two things here then. So either one, the underlayers of chief suit has something similar to the materials that are used in those suits that um, are used in Ford Under Dawn, or two, the entirety of Chief's body must feel like it's on fire at the moment. Oh, yeah, that's... Oh, that's a good point, actually, yeah. I, that's something Spartans, I never really considered. Spartans are trained to obviously ignore pain and just soldier on. Yeah. So, in theory, I think it was even referenced, it might have even been referenced in the book, in, um, in um, The Flood, that his that skin reacted negatively to being covered, and that apparently his in yeah, he felt pain or or discomfort, but he just ignored it and soldiered on. So I can only imagine what's if that's the case. Chief skin must be yeah, literally on fire. I wouldn't be able to ignore that. It's like a walking dead for like E45. <laughs> Chief just needed some E45. <laughs> So Gentle just... derma, derma care for the entire body. <laughs> I was just I was just looking at these. Uh, the idea of them being stacked up above. It's hmm. possible. 
But I don't think they're actually stacked. I think what might happen is they might be stacked in maybe twos or threes, and they don't get out up top. There's some form of way in which they cycle down and then back up. If you look, oh. there is a gap. As though it can be housed up there. And also on the floor above, there's no actual... None of these little panels here that are meant to be sort of checking what on if? the status. So, <clears throat> or status. What if? I mean, consider, consider how many crew are on a ship the size of the Pillar of Autumn. What if... On the on the walls here, it does look like there's a trackway, effectively. What if there the the cryopods are brought in here to re, to be revived, so that people can be revived, but they're actually when the person's been put into cryo, it's actually retracted up the 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 railing and goes into a storage area above the cryo bay. I mean, so that'd there could be there could be hundred there could be hundreds of cryopods above us that Wait. cycle down one after the other to revive people. It would make sense because it's called a cryo bay, as in like it's a bay where cryogenics happen, right? So, yeah. <clears throat> well, uh, well, obviously, for if you bear with me, but I, I understand that you know straight off the bat you like it because that's where all the pods are kept. Not necessarily. I mean, cryo bay and cryo storage. I mean, pretty mm. sure cryo storage is its own thing. On like, I va I I don't know if I'm right with saying this, so this may not be canon. Sorry, guys, but. Uh, I vaguely remember seeing something about the Pillar of Autumn having uh, cryo storage, although whether that was just a synonym, synonym for uh, cryo bays. That's uh, down to you guys, obviously. You, you know a lot more about this than me, but I think it's entirely possible what you suggested is that, you know, it is correct. Above us is just a bunch of really sleepy people. Because <laughs> it makes sense that that would be the case, because there's no... We don't see any more of these bays at all. Yeah. And there's obviously a lot more than, what, 104 people crew in this ship. Oh, yeah. Uh, obviously, no a doubt. lot more than that, yeah. So, it makes sense that either there's two more bays like this, which we never see, or they could go up, which is what the implication is by having tracks. Yeah. Although, to be fair, in Classic, that's might not be mm. the case, but... No, non-existent, un non -existent, yeah. Yeah, but, I mean, we're going off remaster. That's technically the new canon, unfortunately. I say unfortunately, yeah. but like, it just changes some things here and there, which can make it a bit of a pain. But also yeah. makes it really interesting, such as over here where it says, uh, what did that say? Energy activity, right? That we saw in the little, uh, the weird space noodle? Yeah, space, <laughs> space noodle, yeah. And then we've got a bunch of numbers here. I'd be interested to know if these numbers meant anything. These look like the same ones that are on the, the ship. Uh, the ship, oh my god. The... Like the, the the glass panel at the bridge where all the information's being displayed that looks like just maybe a reused asset, but Possibly, yeah. And what's all these symbols also... mean? Not a clue. I am guessing they're just like yeah, button interfaces or something. I don't know. <laughs> For something. I don't know what they do, but Guys we're under attack. How'd you know? Flash and triangle, flash and triangle <laughs> <laughs> Hang on a minute, that looks like they look like rails that go underneath. And it lines up really well with the inclination of the cryopods here. If you look at the bottom of the cryopods as well, it looks like there's a little sort of hatch slash door. Like there's a red, uh, sorry, ye so, yellow circle. So do more of these go underneath as well then? I mean, maybe. I've got nothing under here because there's actually nothing here in terms of textures. But I mean, oh, yeah. if you look, that, that looks like it's a door. Like... I don't know if it's just the way they've touched so, it, but it's split down so the middle. maybe they go underneath. Maybe they go underneath. Or, that would or, make sense, or, yeah. Or because both. I don't know. So they actually I mean, come up I, from underneath. I don't think it goes up, because it doesn't look like there's a door up top. And it looks like the rail, like the electricity... What's, what's the stuff? Uh, cable, that's the word. It looks like the cable, <laughs> <laughs> it looks like the cable stops like near the top, but not the very yeah. top. So, huh. God knows. Interesting. Joe Staten? That was bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Get back to us on that. It's also worth noting the the guy at the top, as as you know, he's he's said to be called Sam at the top. But the guy down the bottom here actually helps you out of your cry well, doesn't help you out of your crypod, but you know, is here with you. It's called Tom. Tom Shepard. Oh yeah, that's that's right. Is uh what is he called? Uh Tech Ordnance uh, Tech. T uh Tech Chief Tech, tech Chief, Chief Shepherd. Yeah. That was it. Yeah, Tech Chief Tom Ch Tom Shepherd. Commander Shepard. What I love about this is, uh, it's this is like sci-fi jargon here. It's like cryogenic life support subsystem diag. I assume meaning diagnostics. 
Yeah. Who the fuck can look at those lines and go, ah, oh, yes, I know exactly what this means. <laughs> That's not transferable data, surely. <laughs> there is nothing like, you can look at that and discern any form of information from. Just look at that and, yeah, he's dying. Yeah. You look at this, it's like, that's an interesting looking heart, right? <laughs> There's no print screen uh, as well, actually, on the uh, on the lock keyboard. There's no print screen. Oh, uh, that's a shame. And then Sam, in again, uh, Sam, who is yeah. up top, is... Uh, he survives if you play co-op, because he doesn't spawn in. Like, that door is just closed over, and yeah. he didn't struggle in the first place. So, that... Yeah. There you go. There's the. Uh, so if you don't, if you don't want to be a heartless bastard, you have to play in co-op, and then that way yeah, you save play, Sam. Yeah, playing co-op and struggle through the entire game so Sam stays alive. <laughs> Until the end, when he probably gets infected by the fucking blown up by the bitter of autumn. No proof. No proof. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and then here oh, yeah, was. There's, there's Tom. There's Tom. Funnily enough, um, his face looks oddly familiar. It looks like one of the Bungie employees, and I can't remember who. It's more than likely they they did use their their um their faces on a lot of the crewmen and characters. Uh yeah, but it wasn't Bungie who did the remaster, so I just wonder why ah, they used a Bungie point. uh Bungie face. This oh my god, his face is in the floor. That's uncomfortable. See either that or he's, he's like just missing that exact part of his face. And that's what the blood is. <laughs> no, it's the memory foam floor. Okay, so do you want to make a point about these uh, pistons out on the side? Oh yeah, so the the Pillar of Autumn, as I've covered in my most detailed breakdown, it's um, got like a honeycomb structure throughout the entirety of the ship that helps it maintain its physical um, structure, structural integrity while um, under heavy damage, where it can actually lose 90% of its mass but still remain like functionally operational. Um, and these pistons, are, they are, if you didn't know, they're that that's what they are, they're hydraulic pistons, and they're rams effectively designed to maintain the structural integrity of key corridors and doorways to aid in the overall structural integrity of the ship. That's pretty, that's pretty good. And they're completely missing in original graphics. <laughs> that's fair enough. Joe, you know, I've just realised I forgot to resync uh, my audio, but that's fine. What I'll do is I'll just bang on at the end, like the very yeah, end yeah. of the clip, and then we can just resync it at the back. Yeah, that's fine. Um, I've only just noticed that now. I was like, did I sink? And I was like, I don't remember pausing the game yet. So, no. That's, that's the that's the crouch tutorial we've just been through. Ah, uh, yep, that's that's correct, yeah. Wait, hold on. Marty O'Donnell screaming, I'm a cowardly fool. Wait, hang on, I can just... One, two, three. One, two, three. There you go, synced. <laughs> <laughs> so, we know after the crouch tutorial, just sync my audio with that. Yeah. Ooh, who was that voice? Because that was Marty's character that said it. If it was Marty's character, then it should, in theory, be Marty's voice. That is not Marty's face. <laughs> Look how big that pistol is. Yeah. So there's actually there's actually two types of um of the of the handgun in Halo. One is a standard issue pistol. The next, the the other one is actually an upscaled variant. It takes exactly the same caliber and exactly the same magazine. But it's um it's one hundred and seventeen percent larger, so it can be held by Spartans. One one seven percent. I like that. Yeah, that's pretty. Uh, this is what, it's pretty cool. This I love the, the details like that. This is where the elite should bellow in your face and then run through that door. But of course, co-op. Yeah, I mean he's still there in co-op. Sometimes I've had I've had that in co-op. Hug. No. no, that was rather unceremonious. And again, you get these big pillars that effectively intersect main corridors and hallways. These are all part of the honeycomb, the hexagonal honey honeycomb structure that maintains its structural integrity. Uh, the fact that it comes directly through the deck is, you know, mild inconvenience for people, you know, moving freight and. Dude, imagine if you had to move just a bit of cargo that was quite literally this wide, and then an inch, yeah. just one inch. Yeah, it's like we're gonna have to cut an inch section out of the, out of the structural it, it integrity that, of the I mean, hull. I suppose, I suppose to an extent, you could just tilt it. Yeah, but yeah. I mean, if it's that big, what on earth are you carrying that's gonna be tilted that easy? <sighs> Sofa. <laughs> yeah, Captain Keys needs a comfy seat. I'd really like to see these actually used actively in gameplay. 
Yeah, I mean, the only the most use you will ever see out of these, apart from these ones over here, which are on Crow's Nest and Halo 3, the only yeah. the most use you will see out of these is uh, debris in Halo 3 and reinforced warthogs in custom games in Halo 3. <laughs> I remember doing that, yeah. Yeah. Pick a pick a couple of these up and put them over um over the, the warthog and it makes yeah, it, yeah. Yeah, back and it makes it like a little tank. You can actually use these smaller ones on, on monkeys as well. I remember trying that. Didn't look as good, but it worked. <laughs> Because they actually, they do have their own. They have little wheels. There you go. There, there's a wheel there, and they actually retract back up. They lock up. Oh, I never even noticed the wheels down there. Yeah. Yeah. So they can actually be rolled into place, and then the the wheels retract back up, which drops it down onto the floor, and then it can be locked down with um, explosive bolts. Yeah. It does. Uh, it does say uh, mobile armor, like on the front of this thing, where the front's covered. It says mobile armor, M infantry M72 MDT 200 millimeter. And WT seven hundred pounds. Seven hundred pounds. Is that it? That's pretty light considering what that is. That is, yeah. I mean, Chief weighs five hundred. Uh, five is it five hundred? No, five hundred kilo. A thousand. Christ, it actually weighs less than Chief. <laughs> That's kind of cool, actually. I like that information now. Why can the Master Chief move this? Well, it's because he's actually heavier than it. Yeah, because five hundred kilograms is a. Thousand, I'm sure it's a thousand pounds. Let me check. I've got. I've got to get the converter up now. Yeah, I'm no good at maths. So there's no point asking me. Kilograms to pounds. I'm sure it is. The, the Americans are already going. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah. So 500 kilograms is 1,102 pounds. So Chief weighs, yeah, a, a thousand pounds or 500 kilograms, or ha half a metric ton, and these things weigh only 700. Oh. Kind of. Kind of cool. Oh, I just went deaf. I just got a notification on my Xbox. Hopefully that doesn't come through on the actual thing. If it does, just blow I mean, the name up. I mean, not not fat shaming or anything, but there are probably people alive who weigh more than that. Uh, there are. Yes, I don't want to. I don't want to talk about that because I just kind of it. It doesn't creep me out, but it just kind of it's a bit weird to me that someone can get past that and still be okay with it. But I mean, obviously people work differently, so. Yeah. Who am I to shame? But you know. Yeah, exactly. They're, they're they're free to do as they want. Yeah. Free to do as they want. It's just I personally couldn't do that. <laughs> this is um an armory actually, isn't it? Yes. Where these are gun racks where guns would be. <laughs> oh. <laughs> these are gun racks. It's a rack for guns. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually kind of cool. It's uh. It's alarming. I mean, it's it's alarming how many positions there are for different rifles and we've come across exactly nothing yeah i mean oh again these the i think these are uh, although it's not shown in game these are actually mechanical so once you put your, your once you put like a the um the weapons are filled up on that um the um the armor or the, the attending officer can effectively click a button and it will retract the guns into a safe location inside by the way, these uh, these guys out here are trying to shoot at the elites on the other corridor across, and you can tell because there's bullet holes all in this wall from where they've been shooting at it. <laughs> so if you stand like here, if you come inside when you're out the way, and you watch them, they'll just start shooting. Oh yeah. I don't know why that is. Ow, you bugger. Um, I don't know. You can yeah, come back and kill him later. <laughs> I, we we can't come back this way, but let me just take a note of his face real quick, just so we see him again. <laughs> <laughs> one minute. It was this one, wasn't it? Okay, I'm gonna call him Mike. Mike, you fucked. <laughs> um. Okay, we should be uh, we should be safe now. That guy was waiting for us the entire time. So I wonder where the Master Chief is. Yes, yeah, like... he's just he's just sat there. He just sees the heads up display on Master Chief's helmet. It just says Twitch. Now shoot. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, here's Marty's goose. Oh yeah, the notice board. Oh, I forgot about that. I love yeah. this notice board. So should we go from top left to bottom right? Should we go yeah, across go on. top. Okay, should we so do it in original graphics first? Let's go in original graphics first. Yes, we've got. Yeah. For sale. Um. What's that say? Pentium. It's a pen. It's some sort of processor. It's a Pentium. Xi thirty. Eleven. Yeah. It's so X is ten. One 11. is. Yeah, so it's a, it's a Pentium 11 33GF, maybe? Yeah. Or GP? 
I think it's GP, and then it's got Chicago office, colony ship, seven-speed manual transmission. Uh, I think it says hide bunk condo. And then the very bottom, it just says for sale integrity. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Marines keep it clean. Clean your area. Toss your filth. Put away your tray. That's just good life advice. Um, Marines. Scooters are for squirts. No scooters on deck. I I love that they actually had to remind people not to have scooters on the deck of the Pillar of Autumn. So it's a cannon that they go around (laughs) with razor scooters. Do you reckon that's what those ancient Marines had? They just got hit in the ankle with like a scooter? And that's why they just like sat in the armory? They just sat, yeah. <laughs> so we told you, you should have used the scooters. There's an alien reference here. Lost, Calico Cat, answers to Jonesy. <laughs> uh, that's the uh, that's the lovely little cat and alien. Yeah. And then here, Oops. fight for her. I think a high reservation of this is reused in ODST. That looks oddly okay. familiar. Um, it's very similar know. to the Destiny Awaits poster, but it's not the same. So I think it's in the Master Chief Collection, we will see a poster similar to this in ODST, I think. Mm. Okay, and should we, uh, let's take a look at the, the, the remastered. The remastered's better, in my opinion. Dark Planetoid Rising. That's, that's, uh, wonder if anyone recognizes what that is. I like that there's, is. there's even, there's even the meme face in the bottom yeah, right. Little, little uh, bottom face. left, sorry. Yeah. I wonder if anyone here recognizes what that background is. The uh, what Requiem. the planet is. Requiem. Yeah, it's Marty's golden goose. Yeah, Marty's golden goose. The um, noodle stolen from him. Yep. Can I have my goose back? <laughs> <laughs> no. God, I love noodle. Um. Fist of the unicorn. Fist of the unicorn. That's a really good one as well. Lead What's guitars. that? Logo? Yeah, with a Z. With a Z. <laughs> so, is SPC... Is that Specialist? Huh? The SPC. What's, what's that in terms of rank? It says SPC, Van, Coletta. Is that Specialist? Um, I would guess so, yeah. Um, and then Private First Class, Dimitrov. Rocking your Eridanus off. Main Hangar. Saturday, 1600 hours. Okay, and then we've got some Spartan threes. See, they could have said rocking Uranus off, couldn't they? Yeah, that would have been good. But Uranus hey. off works also as well. <laughs> Defy um, the Covenant. Defy, I love that. That's Spartan threes, which ties into Reach really well. I think that's a really good use of uh, Spartan threes for propaganda there. Yeah. I can't try any two weeks. Oh, that's cool. At the bottom of the Fist of the Unicorn thing, underneath where it says Pri- uh, Private First Class Dimitrov, it has 0117. Directly under Dimitrov's name. Oh, yeah. See? What would you guys do without that information? <laughs> <laughs> and then, all VTARs must be submitted for final approval 0700 every Tuesday. Units in VTAR non-compliance will be subjected to additional review by French Inspector? French? I think maybe it's Branch? I think it's meant to say Branch, but that definitely says French. I'm not having a stroke, right? Yeah. <laughs> That's why I took <laughs> a minute to by read French. That. Yeah. Unless that means something. Maybe it's a word that I don't know. I'll check. <laughs> it probably isn't. French. Major Camerano, this... French, no, I just get a reference to Breaking Bad. French is a surname, notable persons. Well, no. either... Either oh. this person is the inspector of anyone called French, or it's a typo. But I don't think... I mean, branch inspector makes sense. I don't know what VTARS means, though. V-T-A-R-S. Not a clue. Eh. Oh, dude. I'm, I mean... Partway, I'm not happy because we're, we're playing on easy and we can't do the Meg Easter egg. Oh, yeah. But at the same time, we're not playing on Legendary, so it's no skin off my back. Let's go. <laughs> Are these lights? 
They're weird. There's no actual light source on them. Uh, I used to know what the um what each of the officers were called on the um on the deck. Oh, there's that there's that fucker who shot me earlier. Oh, you're getting it when I get this pistol, buddy. <laughs> comms. I can't remember who was on comms. Yes, yeah, so we've got. Because there's a there's a few comm terminals. I'm sure there are. That's nice. No, there's two comm terminals here. Two comms here. Yeah. And then. So that's. Two engines. I tell. Uh, Dom. Dom Dominique. Dom Dominic. Dominique. That might be. Uh, is it lieutenant? First lieutenant. That might be Lieutenant... I think it's Dominique. Wait, wait, how do you know this information? Is this stuff that's mentioned in the Flood, is it? Yes. Okay, I still haven't read so the that, that might be That might be Lieutenant Dominique. That's a terminal. We'll just we'll just quickly... Uh... Cool. Very good. Oops. I'll, um, I'll, I'll, you know... Put that in post. Fix it in post! Yes. <laughs> um, then, um, what's this one? Life that, pods. That one's life pods. And then on the side you've got tactics and two engines. Tactics. Tac uh, on the left. Right, cutscene. Oh we'll, shit. Oh, there's no oh shit about it. We'll go there afterwards. Okay. <laughs> Good to see you, Master Chief. Orbit ID, <laughs> Pillar of Autumn. I'll just have a just have a drink. Yeah, I'm gonna have a tactical drink myself. Ah. <sighs> Oh. Shit. You're gonna you get did the same as I did, didn't you? <laughs> I put the controller down on the desk. It just took off. <laughs> did exactly the same. Oh, I picked up the wrong bottle of Coke as well. I've just had a drink of like 50 50 like, rum and like Coke Zero. <laughs> It's just conveniently written on the board right there, Halo. Yeah, they call it. Imagine how much of a loop they'd be thrown for if it wasn't called Halo. What if they called it something else? <laughs> yeah, they call it Square. <laughs> 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 I overheard the Covenant talking about the world we're on. They call it Graham. <laughs> I had a mouthful of drink, I nearly drowned. <laughs> Sorry, man. That's all right. <laughs> oh. You know what I would have really loved then if, if Keys put his um pipe into his mouth and blew bubbles? Yeah, that, that makes me think of... Uh, have you seen any Tower 10 Cats? Yeah. There's a scene where, oh, what's his name? I forget. <laughs> Joe Wilkinson has like a, a pipe that blows bubbles. Yeah. And Jimmy Carr says, You can't smoke me. And he inhales the bubbles, forgetting that it's a bubble yeah. pipe. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, Did oh you just God. inhale bubbles? And he's just like rolling his hand. He's like, Carry yeah. on, carry on. Okay. Now. Right, now let's have a look at the rest of the bridge officers. Okay, I'm... Ooh, UNSC Pillar of Autumn Command Post Mainframe. Dude. Mainframe. Let's up like, upload the virus to the mainframe. <laughs> so, TAC. Tactical. I can't remember who was on the tactical... Tactical command. Um, who else have we got? Engineering. Tactical Jack. Engineering. I'm not sure on engineering either, to be honest. Oh! Oh, what? you've actually got the projected collision data here. That's kind of cool. Have you? Yeah. Uh, time to impact, 43 minutes, 27 seconds. It's frozen now. Oh, okay. Um, distance to target, 301 kilometers. Trajectory, 96 JEG, 14 min, I assume. Code, Chucky1, whatever Chucky means. Um... <laughs> Bless you. Um, <coughs> bless <done>. you again. <laughs> Code status week. Begin target sequence. Hollywood. Hollywood Jones. Hollywood Jones, Mark. Oof. Thrust angle 92%. Uh, 
mark. Again, it's such useless information. What am I going to do with that information? It's just fun to know. Um, yeah, these are all three different nav stations as well. <coughs> Let's do once more. I am done now, I promise. <laughs> oh, I <laughs> promise. It's fine. There's, <coughs> there's definitely someone on the bridge called Dominique, and I'm pretty sure that's him over there. I reckon it's this board get down here. <laughs> <laughs> Call for then, on the comms. I remember there being, a, I think a Lavelle William. I think he's an only an he's only an ensign ensign though. So um, relatively new to the bridge, basically. They all just say deck crew though, like yeah. Oh, this is the thing. Classic graphics. If you talk, if you go to keys. His name tag is too short and says, hello, my name, Keys. It doesn't say, hello, my name is Keys. <laughs> hello, my name, Keys. Yeah. And then he also has the Reclaimer symbol on his uh, badge. Yeah. Although back in the day, that was the Marathon symbol. Yes. I mean, still, to me, it still is, but everyone's going to recognize it as that. I don't think many Halo players really know much about like Marathon or, uh, or Myth. I like that these... <clears throat> in in anniversary, they actually put they had the foresight to put in that these seats actually retract back to the deck so that the um the people piloting can actually get back out of the seats without falling down there. Bro, imagine being the guy that fell out your seat, broke the glass, and just completely just vanished the uh, the whole front of the uh, <laughs> the whole front of the ship. And again, oh, that's another thing as well for people who haven't seen that before. The halo ring in front of you is nothing but a. Uh, yeah, it's a smaller. Uh... It quite literally is God's own personal uh, anti son of a bitch machine. God's you can kind of see just walking back and forth how much it moves relative to your position. You can see that like this closest edge of the ring is actually probably closer to us than the very muzzle of the Mac is on the yeah, pier of water. Yeah, the the Mac goes well above the uh, the closest edge of the. But hey, that's what they were working with at the times, and they did a bloody good job nonetheless. Yeah, I mean, it looks... It's a bit more noticeable in Remastered, just because the lighting is much nicer in that, like, scenario. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like, it's a lot more clearly lit because of the direction of the sun, which is just like a floating ball of fuzz, apparently. Uh, let's see what else we've got in here, actually, just before we take off. Um, it's a bunch of graphs and a bunch of other things. What kind of ship is that? I can't remember the name of those types. That's uh, the Covenant ones. Is that CAS? CCS? That's a CCS class battle cruiser. Ah, okay, I was getting mixed up with them. It's still it's still a capital ship, but it's yeah, a Covenant capital ship, but it's just it's, yeah, it's so a bit smaller. CCS means Covenant capital ship, right? Apparently, yeah. And CAS is Covenant assault ship. I assume. Again, apparently, yes. We've we've had very little actual confirmation of those two terms. Well, I'm and if we have had confirmation of those two terms, I'm not aware of it. That's that's how I always sort of imagined it, but I always forget which way round they go. Like these ones have like the weird spikes at the front, and then the other one has like that really sort of satisfying curve back, where the chin of the ship curves back to the stomach. If that makes yeah. sense. I, I really like that ship. Yep. Well, it's worth noting on, if you flick between the original and anniversary graphics, so the one at the top there is definitely a CCS, well, they're both definitely CCS classes, but um, this, they, they're represented by a symbol on, or, or some sort of very crude outline. And they're yeah. both different, so are they actually, they might actually be different classes. I mean, those look like, those could be ticks at the bottom. Oh, possibly, yeah. Which you taught me about. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> like, if you look how weird shaped the Pillar of Autumn is, though. Like in yeah. a classic. She's 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 very back heavy. Yeah, it literally is a big paperweight. Yeah. All right, should we go kill that first set, Grunt? Go on. Yeah. Come here, pew, little munchkin. Pew. <laughs> I got him.
Wow, those marines lasted a really long time. Didn't they? Oh, that's a marine. That wasn't me though. Okay, so we'll clear this area out and then we'll take a look at what's on for dinner. <laughs> oh, speaking of which, what did you have for dinner? Do you have a, do you have a roast? No, no, I, it's a Sunday, but I didn't have a roast. No. Oh, what, what did you have? Um, we had. I think we just had like pie and chips. I think. What do you mean you think? Were you not there? I was there. Yeah, I just. <laughs> more often than not, when it gets to dinner time, I just, I, I'm, I'm just shoveling it in my face. Yeah, I, I'm, I get I'm that, that hungry. I just, it goes in. That was my uh, first like full meal of the day. I had an omelette for like lunch, but that was my first full meal of the day. Was the was the roast? Oh, it was so good, but we forgot the carrots. So I was like, wonder why the plate's empty, and then realized when I was cleaning up the kitchen. Um. Okay, food. Turkey dinner, hamburger dinner, cheeseburger dinner, and it's just a Chinese burger dinner, uh, cheeseburger dinner, hot dog dinner, meatloaf dinner, chef special, cola, lemon lime, lemonade, orange, water, soda, chef surprise, hot chocolate, cappuccino, <laughs> coffee, hot tea, iced tea. So... What was Chef the surprise point? is just is just a cup of warm piss. <laughs> yeah, it's a cup of it's 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 not even like fully warm, it's like lukewarm. Like it's just <laughs> <laughs> But it's like you it's complain got, like, about the temperature. <laughs> but, yeah, it's got like a little lid on it as well, so it doesn't spill so you make sure you get every last drop. But yeah. um <laughs> But uh, yeah, we were talking about this when we when we uh initially recorded this, even though this is our first time because we get everything right first time. Um, oh, of course, but we talked about this, didn't we? Like, this has got to be automated. Like, there's no actual chef, right? Like, this well, is yeah, automated because it, it, it says push. Unless it's yeah. like a ma- unless it's like a Men in Black situation, they've got someone stuck behind that screen, just throwing meals out of the uh, <laughs> <laughs> out of the thing. I don't think there's uh, anyone in there. Yeah, that's what the hatches at the side are for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's to throw the food back when you don't like it. And then obviously you've got the bin here. Which yeah. you can actually throw a grenade into. Pew. Oh. The bin is no longer, but... Oh, wow. That looks... I had an accident. <laughs> okay. And then, that's all there is for the chef special. I mean, that's kind of interesting. <coughs> I don't know. It's, it's weird looking at small, like, just things like that in the level. It's like, someone had to write those down. Yeah. Like someone had to go, okay. Someone what put would the I effort want? into designing that. Yeah, so someone someone went, okay. When I have dinner, I have drinks. What else? There's orange, lemon, yeah, lemonade. Uh, there's iced tea, warm tea, coffee, and then someone just decided to write lemon lime. Yeah. Keeping it one hundred percent professional. I think these are just reused. Yeah, seems that way. Yeah. Okay, so the floor signs actually say airlock. Oh, that's reassuring. Okay, so... Oh, what are these? Uh... I mean, in classic, they they're look just at, pipes, they, but... Yeah. They, it could just be an access way, yeah, to, to um, sensitive equipment underneath for engineering reasons. But they also li- they look a little bit like the automatic um, dispensers of um, SMGs that you get yeah, in, like that's... in Cairo. It reminds me of, like the uh, Halo Two trailer, like the really high end sort of uh, yeah. digitally rendered one, where he just walks through. He doesn't even stop to grab a rifle. He just grabs it on his way past. Kind of reminds me of those uh, dispensers. But yeah, oh, got that teleport was disorienting. Okay, don't cut to my screen here. Be decorating. Okay. <laughs> Again, it looks horrifying in classic. It's just. Yeah. So these are apparently tick, um, tick boarding craft. The same type that um, you see in uh, Halo 2 on the Cairo station. Alright, you're going to be in for a lovely treat when you decide to cut back to ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> Classic. 
Oh god. <laughs> I don't know how I got it all the way by the door, but I did. He painted with his organs. Yeah, I don't know. I it's not like a, a case of like, oh I find it oddly satisfying. It's just like I know it's the first game that was that sort of visceral to me. Yeah. Like there were games that were visceral where you rip people's limbs off and stuff, but nothing that had like the um, sort of the secret redecoration mode. Well, that's embarrassing. I missed two, two hits on him. That's okay. It's going to be double embarrassing when you realise you've got a third person view of it as well. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> I just watched it. Oh, that is bright. Come here, little munchkin. Chief really leans into it when he punches someone with a pistol. He really does. He's like. I'm, not only am I going to lean into it, but I'm going to lean into them. I also really love that punching animation. Like, he... He almost muzzles himself. If you look at, like, yeah. the... He's just like, yeah, it's cool. A point blank 50. That's nothing to this armor. Really? What was that? I think a grenade. I think a, a, a marine threw a grenade. Okay, I'll solve the problem before it happens. Uh oh. Okay, I've solved the problem. Have you? Yeah. You, did you did you kill the marines? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> They're still showing up as friendlies, and they're not shooting at me, so yeah, but we're fine. Oh, I love that. I, that's one of my favorite lines in Halo CE, is um, that the Hispanic guy who shouts, Mira, Mark V! <laughs> <laughs> He's one of my favorite characters. He's just excited to see a Mark V. Yeah, don't blame him. I mean, wouldn't you? Which, if you think about it, it's really interesting that it's... Um, at the time, it was thought of that, you know, okay, this armor is Mark V. It wasn't just armor. Like, it was Mark V armor. Yeah. They were like, yeah, okay, we're going in and we're going in with that info. Oh, that's interesting. Huh. That's a strange bug. Hmm. One of the screens was only visible if you were to, uh, if you looked at it from, like, a certain angle. Really? Yeah. I mean, it wasn't like anything like Easter egg related. It was just broken. Okay. God. I've got to say, though, the sounds that... The remastered sounds are really nice. Yeah. Oh, God. Man, this guy's really dead. Damn. Ouch. Ooh. Oh yeah, this is my favorite room. This is the look up room. Yeah, this is this is literally where they teach you to look up, because a lot of a lot of shooters to that to that stage were very very linear, um, and because it's um, it was one of the first um, FPSs on a console, they had to teach the yeah the, the the user to look up because threats could come from above. I like that though. Did you just kill a marine? No. What was that red zero that just appeared on my screen? I have no idea. Honestly, I, I haven't killed a marine. <laughs> I haven't killed. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I believe you. I just don't know to what extent. <laughs> okay. Oh. That's that sneaky bugger. Okay, should we, uh, should, should we do the airlock jump again? Or... Yeah, go on. There's not much to see, really, is there? Is it worth doing? No, but... Yeah, go on, do it. People don't know... If people don't know about it, they some, will. Some people... Yeah, some people might not know. Can't wait till we get to Halo 3 and I can really break the game. Okay. Let's... Jump up this one here. 
Okay, if I can completely get it right. Just doing classic where I can actually figure out what I'm jumping. There we go. I'll switch to your footage here. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, you can come outside of the airlock. You can drop down and walk down there. It's, it's not really worth it. Doesn't, doesn't do much. But yeah, it's just a weird little bug. And it's kind of cool. And you can also get back in as well if you're particularly concerned. There you go. There you go. Let the mission continue. That's actually yeah. a good idea as well. We can just showcase sort of like small little bits like that. Like I've, yeah. I, I know plenty of stuff to break Halo 3. And I, I can't wait to get to outskirts on Halo 2 where we can go outside the map. Which way are we going? Oh my god. This way? Go on. Yeah. <laughs> I just absolutely just assaulted a grunt and he just went what the <laughs> there's a little symbol for cryo there as well there's a big one up there Okay, well they've done. Yeah. Okay, so let's talk about the Spartans that are shown on the displays here. All one other one of them. <laughs> yeah, Linda. So in, during the fall of Reach, uh, Linda was actually um, she was hit so badly she flatlined, and as a last ditch attempt to save her, Chief um, put her into a cryopod, and she remained in there basically. Uh, she was ejected into space when Captain Keys went to crash land the Pillar of Autumn on the Halo Ring and wasn't picked up until afterwards when Chief had commandeered the Longsword. Um, and I think he even took her... I think he took her all the way back to Reach into the... Um, into Castle Base and I think Halsey revived her. Which one was Castle? Uh, Castle Base. I don't think we've been there is that in the any one, of the games. No, I mean, is that the one that June goes to? Or has to return to? Yes. Yeah, and he's, uh, he ends up... Doesn't he go up against, like, a bunch of X back up, so he's... A camo deletes? Yes. Yeah. I remember that, and I don't, mem I don't remember where I remember that from. Oh, talk about how this is we use later as well. Yeah, so this is... This is the other crybait that you go into at the very... Uh, on the very last level. Uh, and this doorway here and these shutters are removed uh, so there's glass here instead and that doorway goes out of the gantry so you can gain access to here so that's actually another cryobay down there see the cryogenic life support subsystem stuff is here as well maybe it's brain activity I mean Possibly, but that's it says diagnostics, like subsystem oh. diagnostics, doesn't it? Yeah. It's got the heart rate monitor at the bottom left. He's, it's it's working. <laughs> Don't know what to tell you. And then cryo chamber system status at the top. So you get SP, HL, AG, Beta, AG, TMP, F5, STR, NG, and Gen, A, B, and CO. I don't know what any of those means, but I'd imagine they're probably like elements and stuff. They're they're. They don't match up with elements, but they are probably the chemicals that are used during the cryogenic process. There are that you do get, you do receive a cocktail of chemicals. Oh, it says CD at the end, not CO. I was going to say, I think uh, CO would be carbon monoxide, wouldn't it? Yeah. Obviously, I, I didn't do very well with science. Um, oh, the floating light rays above there as well. There's no actual lights. There aren't classic, but. Huh. Literally unplayable. In fact, that's the whole, almost the whole way through here. Literally unplayable. One out of ten. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I had to do it, turn, didn't we? Yeah, we yeah. just got zero again. Why are we getting zero when we kill grunts? Not a clue. Okay, I'm gonna beat the zero out of this one then. And this one. Okay. I win. <laughs> 
I'm gonna go left. Oh, no. <gasps> oh my god, my ear. You alright? Yeah, I, I threw a grenade and I thought it stuck the elite because he ran at me. It sounded like the, uh... It sounded like the Tom and Jerry scream. <laughs> you know when he sees something, like, uh... Yeah. When he, he's like, oh, I need to look after Spike's dog or whatever. Like, his, his son. And then you can just see the dog about to, like, sleepwalk off a cliff or something, just absurd. And yeah. that's the scream that he does, that's what I heard. There we go. Okay. So should we, the do, grenade should tutorial? we do the second one this, this time around as well? Yeah, go on. Okay. Um, okay, we just need to not kill all the moths. Oh, is it this one? I may have missed the... Uh... Oh, I can do it. I like good sword. Okay. Oh, no! <laughs> the Marine killed him! <laughs> the Marine killed him, yeah. Yeah, got him. <laughs> I do like the helmet that the pilots wear in there. Yeah, it's lovely. It, it, I like it's, how it's just I don't a know. vertical drop. It's like we yeah. can make it launch, but just fall. 